Yo, what's going on guys? This is me, Sin, and welcome to my Infernoid Layer deck profile. So this is the final deck profile for an Infernoids that I have for now. And I will also be making test hand videos, so make sure you are subscribed if you don't want to miss them. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So, to an unquint, to Deviati, I already explained in the, the two other deck profiles. I mean, the Ancient Warriors deck profile, because it was the first one, so I wanted to clarify that. Uh, make sure you watch those other deck profiles as well, because they actually showcase very interesting info about the deck and how you can actually play it. So, even if you're not trying to play, like, uh, Ancient Warriors uh, Infernoid or... Uh, what was it? Uh, Infernoid Needle Fiber Turbo Combo. Uh, you can still actually learn a lot from these videos and it will actually be helpful even if you only want to play Infernoid Lair, so yeah. Uh, three states in mass, of course. I think it is significantly better than a Tundel when a Tundel's level is not utilized because a Tundel's effect is not too great. So outside of being a level 8, it just doesn't really achieve much and Saint Mass actually has an incredibly strong effect, so yeah. Uh, Sejet, of course, Petrulia, Harmadic. You could actually play multiple Petrulias again, but this time you actually don't make any rank 4 XCs, so this is why I'm actually only playing 1 and 1. I think this is correct. You don't want to play too many Infernoids in the Lair version because you also play other uh, win conditions, so yeah. Uh, 3 Decatron and 3 Lilith, which is also my other normal summon because I'm playing quite a few traps. So I think Lilith is actually quite good uh, in this deck. It's just like extra consistency because sometimes you have hands but like that look like Lilith and Imagination and then three Infernoids. And like let's just say that Lilith was something else. It would have been like, I don't know, like a Lightning Storm or like a Mystic Mine. It's not necessarily like... Um, I don't know, it's not too great. But Lilith, you can actually do some cool stuff even during your opponent's turn. I mean... During your end, your opponent's end phase, you can actually just uh, reveal three evenly, and then during your own turn, then you just go into battle phase. You only have one back row, and you just use evenly, so... I've done this quite a few times, but most of the time, you just tribute right away during your own turn, set Void Feast. Uh, sometimes I actually just set... I just reveal one Metaverse and then, like, the two other cards, because Metaverse is just, like, obviously the most powerful out of all these cards, but yeah. You can also play Trap Trick as well in this deck. I actually should have listed in my idea section, but yeah, Trap Trick is actually a really, really good card, so... Mm -hmm. Arima, just for multiple copies of uh, Lair, but it actually has an effect of its own. You're not really searching, like, a dark monster with, I, I guess, what, 2,000 or more defense. Oh my god, forget it. Like, you can search Diabolos and um, the Dark Lord monsters, which is, like, the notable thing, but... Yeah, it's just obviously not gonna come up. Uh, most of the time you're just drawing one card and you're tributing your opponent's monster. So Arima, actually, if you draw multiple Arimas, it's actually good. You use one Arima effect from the hand to search Lair, and then you normal summon the other one, tribute your opponent's monster for cost. They can't really negate it if they have like a, I don't know, like some sort of negate, and then you draw one card and then you can do some cool stuff, so yeah. Uh, terraforming a three layer, obviously, following the, the the exact same logic. Extravagance, because this time uh, the deck is actually just more of a control ver variant instead of combo. So, as you can see, most of the cards in my extra deck, I don't really care too much if I banish them, as long as I'm not getting rid of three Tierra. And I want to keep at least like one to two Entis just for safety, because uh, destroying a lot of cards with Entis is actually insane. I think there's also Omega that I should probably be playing, it has an effect in the grave. Yeah, I should be playing Omega. Probably cut Unicorn, honestly. Mm, yeah, I mean, Wee Witch is Im important because uh, when you use Lair, your monsters are no longer fire. So if you want that boost, you uh, actually have to make Wee Witch with your monsters. Uh, and then all of your monsters are dark, so naturally they have a lot of attacks. So, yeah. Uh, imagination. I was, yeah, I was talking about Extravagance. So avoid Imagination. Once again, you're playing a going second variant this time. So Imagination is very, 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 very good. Uh, Vanishment. Vanishment is always good, so whether you're going first or second, who cares? Mystic Mine, of course, since you're playing Terraforming, Metaverse, and a few ways to, I guess, increase your odds of seeing Metaverse. And in the idea section, we have Demise of the Land, so another card that is relatively similar to Metaverse, a bit more situational, unfortunately, because it's only when your opponent actually special summons a monster, so it's not proactive. It has a bit of um, reactiveness, but if your opponent actually cannot negate the Demise of the Land, they are in for trouble because it's just, uh, it's a really terrifying card. And a lot of people, they don't really consider citing back removal against Inferno, it's because, think about it, like, the one card that you would actually try to destroy with, like, Cyclone or Twin or whatever would be, like, the Void Feast or Vanishment, but then they just shade it, and then they get rid of, like, the Vanishment or the Imagination or whatever, so it's just, it's just really bad, so that Mystic Mine actually really catches people off guard, and, uh, being able to main deck it, if, even if you're only playing one, it's kind of like if you were playing three. 
uh, well, technically a bit more, and then you're playing like a 37 card deck, but no, that is definitely not uh, the correct maths. It's like, a any copy of Extravagance makes your deck like uh, much more consistent. It's better than Upstart, of course, when uh, your deck is not uh, negatively impacted by it, so yeah. Uh, three evenly, three Void Feast, of course, very, very good at uh, just vomiting on the board. I know some people actually play Lava Golem, and then they only play like one Feast, I don't like it. I think Lava Golem sucks. Uh, I think also Reasoning sucks because I really am trying to play like Lilith and stuff. I know Gamma is really good because uh, if your Extravagance gets Ashed, then you just Gamma right away. You could definitely play Gamma. Um, if you want to, you can honestly even cut the Liliths and then cut uh, one copy of Void Feast. That's like as far as I'm willing to go, but just yeah, I, I wouldn't make this deck unplayable. It just uh, li like resolve gamma and stuff because this deck is already quite good going second. Honestly, it's it's consistent, which is important. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the main deck for the ideas. Uh, no extra deck. Sorry, first uh, three Terra, three Entis, Unicorn, Crusadia, Equimax, Phoenix. Uh, yeah, Equimax. I already explained how ridiculously overpowered it was. Basically, you can just have like Equimax pointing to a two Inferno monsters. You attack with Equimax first, so it's like. Basically, it's gonna have like seven to 8,000, it's ridiculous. And then, after you're done attacking, you use the effect of one NVIDIA the Inferno, it's tribute your Equimax, because if you aren't using the effect, then your monsters that are pointed by Equimax, they cannot attack. So you are getting rid of that Equimax to no longer be affected by the like negative claws of it, and then you banish like a monster, like a card from your opponent's grave, because the Inferno, it's, I mean, uh, Saint Simas and Sejet, they all have like that uh, condition during your turn, and, uh, I mean, if not, you just tribute your own monster with Lilith, that also works. But yeah, it's just basically you're doing that most of the time, and then you're just uh, attacking with your two other Infernodes, so it's like, it's it can deal like 12,000 or 13k damage, it's ridiculous, man, it's just really crazy. But, uh, yeah, no, Equimax is a really good card. Phoenix, it's kind of free, I mean, it, also just in this deck, since you're actually locked under like level 8 or lower only, because, I mean, if you have a level... 8 a monster on the field, you're not allowed to summon the Infernos where there are summoning conditions, you're still allowed to like make Decatron and then like, what you can do is like link off your monsters, be unaffected by, I mean, no longer be affected by uh, the level 8 or lower claws, and then you can start uh, summoning back again from your grave, stuff like that, so making Phoenix and then Unicorn just for free removal or Echo Max just, just instantly to kill is uh, really really good. Uh, Hita is also like a bonus summon, uh, we, we Witch is basically the exact same as Doolittle Chimera, so... Doolittle Chimera is like normal situation, so just resolving Feast is already game, th thanks to Doolittle Chimera. I'm pretty sure even without Doolittle Chimera, it's, it's obviously still doable, but you know, it's wh why not just have it the easy way? And We Witch uh, would still be the exact same thing, but this time your monsters are all darks because of Lair of Darkness, so yeah. Uh, Hita whatever, Sunlight Wolf, I already kind of explained it, basically... It's cool when you play Ash, because you get to recycle back Ash every time you summon back like a monster to like the, the like the Sunlight Wolf zone, but it doesn't really come up that often, I guess. But you can recycle back Decatron, which is still good. I mean, the recycling back the recycling back the babies could also come up a little bit, but it's not too great. And recycling back the big guys, I mean, that legit doesn't come up at all, because whether they're in your hand or in the grave, it literally doesn't change anything, so yeah. A link Rebo in case the Decatron gets, uh, I don't know, negated and you want it in the grave to like banish it and summon like a baby. It could come up honestly. And then use the baby's effect, destroy a card, and then make Phoenix, discard another card, and then make like a big Infernoid and then you can kind of just kill your opponent. So sometimes it actually just snowballs like that instantly. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the idea section, I already explained the Ash, it's cool, but Sunlight Wolf, uh, Galaxy Cycle, I don't even know why it's there, man. Literally, all my deck profiles, they always have, like, the same opening, uh, I mean, the, the same uh, ideas uh, section cards, uh, because I just, like, go copy-paste, copy-paste, and then I'm like, okay, now time to change it up a bit. I just, I obviously don't restart from scratch, that would be really, really dumb, a huge waste of time, but yeah. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, my Mind Control, Dark Ruler, Forbidden Drop, Demise of the Land is the big one, Enemy Controller is also very, very good when you're playing Layer of Darkness, because sometimes you only have like a Rima or Layer or Terra, I mean, or Layer or Terraforming or Metaverse. So eight, you know, eight layers, that's that's very good, very respectable. But you then you have like no other really like really good cards. And if you do have Inferno, it's then not enough to like summon them, like summon one and then play. But yeah, with um with enemy controller, it's just like one free way of uh, getting advantage of Layer of Darkness, I suppose. But if you already have like an Inferno, then this is just redundant. So yeah, I mean you can get you can tribute your useless tokens that you get with Lair, 
mm, which is cool. So yeah, you can do that, but whatever. Uh, I don't even know why uh, bonus Hita was there, but yeah, two Mystic Mine when you know you're going second because you just lost. Or sometimes, like, you win, but, like, people still make you go first because they're scary. That I mean, they're scared. I don't know, man. Some people are whack. But, yeah, anyways, and Infinite as well, which is another card, if you play three of, you can actually set with Lilith, which is really, really cool. So, that is pretty much all I had to showcase for this Inferno Lair deck profile. If you have any comments or feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Once again, uh, this is basically, like, my favorite deck, my second favorite deck of all time. So this is why I actually uh, took the effort to make three deck profiles, a huge combo video, and I'm gonna make three test 10 videos as well. So, I mean, at the moment this video is uploaded, I'm pretty sure two test 10 videos or at least one has already been uploaded, but yeah. I'm basically like making all these deck profiles in a batch, like kind of the same day, like some during the morning and then some during the night, but yeah, anyways, that is pretty much all I had to say. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.